Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about um, type checker plugin. So this was a request that came in um, over Twitter when, when we asked last week, ooh, what should there be new videos about? And so the answer is, is or one of the answers is type checker plugins. I've, I've taken a note of other answers. We'll, we'll explore other topics in future weeks, I hope. Um, but, but today I really want to talk about how these work and, and how we might start to write one. Um, unlike some other videos, I'm not going to write the whole thing in front of everyone. Um, it actually took me two, two and a half hours today um, to, to pull all this together, right? So it, because writing these things is, is, is a little hard, I was hoping to be able to do one really quick in front of everyone, but it's not quite so easy. Um, and, and so that's that's one of the interesting things that we'll see here today is that these type checker plugins, they, they're, they're still a little rough around the edges, but they're very, very powerful. So let's let's dive in. The, the um, sort of object of study here is that I've created a rather elaborate um, uh, uh, piece of type level programming. Um, I can't quite show off exactly everything that I've done here. That's because this work is part of, of a collaboration. We're writing a paper, hopefully going to submit to Popple. Things are still a little rough around the edges. I'm not quite ready to sort of publicize all of that yet. Um, but what we see here is that I, I have a module. It has a lot of extensions enabled, um, and it uses a bunch of fairly basic uh, building blocks. And so, <clears throat> Right now, as we can see down here, it builds. So if I try to load this in GHCI, everything hopefully works out just fine. Uh, but it needs to use um, identities sometimes. So in particular, I want to look for zero is right identity. Um, I don't want that one, I want this one. So what happens sometimes, let me comment this out, and we're going to see that a type error comes up, and then let's take a look at that type error. So this, the, what this code is doing is not really all that important. It's doing some hard work. Um, but now if I try to recompile, I'm going to get some large type errors uh, pointing at, at, at other lines, actually. But they all have the form cannot deduce that bound plus zero equals bound. So if you watch my, my video a few weeks ago on, on sort of type level programming and proofs, we see that sometimes we need to prove things. So this error comes from the fact that, let me open up the other file. So this is my preliminaries file. Um, here I've defined natu uh, unary natural numbers. Um, this is a, a terrible way of representing a number, of course, but it's used only at compile time. So we don't have to worry about our runtime program slowing down. And I have a type level function plus that operates on these numbers. Here we see that 0 plus m equals m, but my error is around having something bound plus 0. We don't know anything about bound plus 0. And in fact, to prove that bound plus 0 equals bound, we need to write a little inductive proof. Um, and so I've in fact done that. Um, if we look at nat properties safe, then I can see that it's not hard to write a little proof that 0 is in fact a right identity for plus. Um, but it does take it does take some work. Um, jumping back to my my main code here, and 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 some of what we're going to see that that prelim file um, is indeed going to be posted um, and and linked in the description here, as well as the type checker plugin that we're going to look at. Um, so here I have to use this zero is right identity to prove that bound plus zero equals bound, and that's what allows this to type check. So if I uncomment this little bit here and then try to recompile, then indeed everything works. That this gives us what we need. But I don't really want to have to do that, right? So to discover that I need this isn't that hard in this case. Actually, the type error in this case is, is pretty informative and tells us really what we need to do. But, um, but maybe I have a larger program. Maybe there's a lot more going on. What I would really like is a type checker plugin to be able to recognize errors of this sort and then come in and, and save me and, and fix this. And so that's indeed what we'll get. So let me comment this out again. Uh, I'll show you that it doesn't compile. And then now, if I go up to the top and write the magical incantation that looks like this. Oops, forgot an S there. Um, OK, so now if I compile this, oh, we see that we get an error. Um, GHC stage 2, panic, mic plugin usage, file not found. Um, so we see here I'm actually using a, a, a fairly recent head build of GHC. I'll get back to why I made that decision um, in, in a few minutes. But here we get this panic saying file not found. And that's because I don't have a plugin.o file. Right? When I'm using a plugin, I don't just need to have compiled this thing. I need to have, have sort of, uh, well, I don't just need to have processed it, but I need to have really compiled it into a proper.o file. So 
in a in a better world, right, GHCI would know to do this and do this for me, but we're not in that better world. So working with these plugins is still a little rough around the edges. So I'm gonna go, here's the directory I'm working in. Here's my plugin.hs file, and I need to compile that. Uh, I need to use my same uh, head version here. And so we're gonna compile plugin.hs. I don't want to sort of compile any dependencies. I just want to compile this one file. Um, and I've learned that I need to say dynamic two so that that way it compiles it so that it can be linked dynamically. That's what we're going to need to link it within GHCI. Um, and then if I do this, I think I'm going to get an error saying that the GHC package isn't exposed. And that's because this file, as we'll see, it, it directly imports modules within GHC. So that means I need to specify package GHC, and hopefully that should be enough. And now having done that, we have, whoops, let me show you, we have the .o files and the .dino files. And so now if I recompile this, aha, success. So let's just, just to recap, so I've turned this plugin on, but um, down below, uh, zero is right identity, we see here that I've still commented out this this use and yet my file still compiles and that's because the plugin is doing some work for me uh, so let's take a look at, at what that plugin is really doing um, so what is that that is plugin.hs let's jump there um, okay so this is the plugin file this one is linked from the description and and this doesn't import any of the other things in my in my project it's just sort of a self-standing file um, but it does import lots and lots of things from GHC. And interestingly, I didn't need, whoops, I didn't need any um, uh, language extensions to write this. So what a plugin is, is it's a module that exports one, uh, it could actually export more things, but it exports something um, named plugin. And this plugin has to have type plugin. Oh, I didn't, I don't have a type signature. That's very sinful of me. Oh, well. Um, so what is this? This comes from this module ghc.driver.plugins. Um, so somewhat embarrassingly, I was unable to find this on Hackage anywhere. Somehow the, the latest version of, uh, of GHC that's posted on Hackage is 8.10.2. Um, so, and, and the module names all changed. So I had to find my local uh, build of, of, of um, the Haddock docs here. So that's what we're looking at. Um, and in this ghc.driver.plugins, we see that there's a plugin and this plugin has all different components to it, depending on exactly what part of GHC we wish to modify. Um, so we might wish to modify the way that core um, gets transformed. That's that's GHC's internal language, sort of. So if we want to change how how Pro gets optimized, um, what we're, we're what we're concerned with today is a type checker plugin here. But then there's things about whole fits and. Um, changing the, the result of parsing and changing the result of renaming, all kinds of fun things here. Um, but like I said, we want to focus in on TC plugin. Um, and the one way to do that is not to try to build this record directly, but instead to use default plugin and use record update. And so indeed, that's what we've done. I've said default plugin, and then I've updated TC plugin to be a plugin that ignores any command line options and always returns my TC plugin uh, as written here. Um, and so if we look at TC plugin, then it says this has type TC plugin. That very confusingly is a type synonym for something that refers to a TC plugin, which is imported from another module. So we actually have two things named TC plugin. Um, so I'm gonna follow this one. Now we get to the one that's, that's a little bit more interesting. So this is another little record of, of an initializer, the actual solver and a stop function. Um, the idea here is that this all uses an existentially quantified variable S. And what's nice about this is that if our type checker plugin um, requires some extra state, um, we can we can pack that in S. Our particular uh, type checker plugin, the way that I've designed it, does not use this. And so, in fact, we see here that init, solve, and stop all uh, instantiate S to be just unit. So the initialization is is pretty simple. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, stopping is also pretty simple. But of course, all of the work happens in solve. So let's take another look at solve here. So solve is, it takes this state, again, that's not very interesting in our case, and then it, it, it's something of type TC plugin solver. So already at this point, things become rather challenging if we just look at the Haddock documentation. And so here we see the TC plugin solver is a list of CT to a list of CT to a list of CT to, to some other stuff. So how are we gonna make sense of this? Well, 
this again is part of the slightly scratchy um, uh, user interface uh, to writing plugins, right? Using plugins is quite simple. We just sort of say dash F plugin. Actually, um, if you get the Cabal settings right, you can you can use Cabal build here. Everything works quite nicely once the, the writer of the plugin has done all the hard work. Um, but how, how are we going to write a plugin with, with such sort of uh, a poor documentation? Well, it turns out that it's much better to look at the source code. So um, I have all of GHC's source code right here on my machine. And I'm just going to grep that source code for type, what was it called? TC Plugin Solver. Uh, let's see. And it has found something good. Um, and then now here, oh, now we get some more information that's cleverly hidden from the Haddock documentation. Um, so clearly we, we could do a little bit better here. But the idea is, is that as uh, GHC is working with constraints, it has given constraints, things that it knows already to be true. It has wanted constraints, things that it is trying to prove. When it can't prove a wanted, these wanted constraints get rendered as errors. Um, and then these other thing called derives. Um, I am on a long campaign to kill derived. They will die soon. Um, and so I don't want to spend much time talking about derived. I know people will like wonder, oh, what is a derived? I don't want to answer that because the future won't have them. So that would be a waste of time. Um, today, what I want to concern ourselves, what we're concerned by is a wanted, right? This is something that GHC can't solve. And we don't need to solve it from a given. We're going to be able to sort of solve it from first principles in, in our case. Um, okay, so relating this back to our plugin that we're writing, we're going to write this solve function, which um, ignores this unit, right? That's the that's our, our state that we're not using. Um, we ignore all of the givens. We ignore all of the derives. And instead, we just look at the wanted. And we have to produce a, let's see, this TC plugin solver. Let's go back and see what that is. So this, this it works in the TC plugin M monad and produces a TC plugin result. Um, so what is a TC plugin result? Well, let's grep and find the answer. So at this point, we just give up on Haddock entirely and use grep. And so a TC plugin result is either a contradiction. That means that the plugin found a contradiction. We've looked at all of our givens and something is awry and we want to reject the user's program. Or we've succeeded perhaps solving some constraints. So here, if we've solved any constraints, we can put them in this list. If we have any new constraints that GHC should consider, we put them in this list. Um, so, and then we're gonna we're gonna get in just a little bit about what these ev terms are. Okay, so now we go to the code, and in the end, there's gonna be a bunch of work that we do. But the thing I want to highlight now is that we're going to return this plugin. Okay, solved. Right, and we're never gonna produce new constraints. Instead, this solved. Well, let's let's we, we what's that going to be? We're going to look through our wanted constraints to see if there's any that match our pattern, right? Where our pattern is going to be, um, let's go back to our our initial program here and let's turn off the plugin just to remind ourselves of what the pattern should look like. Um, so now I compile this, and we're going to get errors could not deduce bound plus zero equals bound. So the pattern that we're looking for is when we have an equality. On one side of the equality, we have some type plus zero. And then on the other side of the equality, we have that same type that was to the left of the plus. That's the pattern that we're looking for. So we're going to write our plugin to detect that pattern. Um, so we're sort of going to, we're going to work our way up as we're looking at the code here. I think that's going to be the easiest thing to look at. So this solved here is going to be a list of constraints to solve. We're going to come back to evidence a little bit later. Instead, right now, I just want to see, can we detect this kind of case? And so we're going to look at each wanted, and each wanted is a constraint, the CT thing. And then we're going to look, we, we're going to call this is zero on right pred. That's going to be a function that detects if we're in the right case. And so we're going to look at the predicate associated with the constraint. So the constraint has a couple of other little bits of information attached to it. But the predicate, that's the, the sort of the, the, the type describing what it is we're trying to solve. And so here, that's this is zero on right pred helper function. Um, and so this looks at the predicate. This is just a, a type in, in GHC. And now we have to check, OK, is this? Uh, an equality type. And if so, let's extract out the two types it's relating. So the function get eek pred ties maybe does exactly that. So with this get eek pred ties maybe um, disassembles essentially this pred. And if it is in fact a predicate, 
then it's going to, uh, or if, if it is in fact an equality predicate, it's going to decompose this into an LHS and an RHS. Um, this nominal here is a check to make sure that we're doing nominal equality and not representational equality, um, which is uh, uh, representational equality is all about coercible, uh, and that doesn't affect us here. Um, you'll see that uh, there's no just here on the left. That's because I'm, I'm working in the maybe monad, so there's this sort of implicit match against just. Then we want to check, okay, so now we know that it's an equality, but doesn't really match our pattern. So we're going to check this is zero on right ties. That's down here, so it takes these two types and then returns a bool. And because we don't really care which one is on the left of my equality and which one is on the right of my equality, we care very much which is on the left and the right of the plus, as we'll see, but not of the equality. So we're going to check both ways in this check function. This check function uh, takes the left-hand type. We're going to say that the left-hand type whoops, is the one with the plus, and the right-hand type is the other one. Um, so we split up the left-hand type. Is it an applied tycon, right? In this case, my plus, that's a, the name of a type family, which is in within GHC. That's really considered a type constructor. And so we break this apart into some type constructor plus its left argument and its right argument. We want to make sure that the left argument is plus TC. Um, we want to make sure that the, uh, or not the left argument, we want to, that the tycon is plus TC. I may have misspoken there. That the left argument is the same as tie 2. That's the type on the right-hand side of the equals. And then, now we have this, this tie one right. That's going to be the right argument of the plus. Well, now we have to split that up into another tycon app. This time, it's a tycon applied to no arguments. That's this empty list here. And we're going to have this tycon, which is on the right of the, of the plus. Is that, in fact, a promoted datacon? If it is, then we'll extract the datacon that it was promoted. And then is that datacon equal to the zero datacon? If all of these things check out, then indeed we have something that looks like this, true, otherwise false. Right? So once we've detected that, then we know we want our plugin to solve it. Now is the time we had to think about evidence. So the way that GHC works is we have all of these predicates, and, uh, and we're trying to solve each one, all these constraints that we're trying to solve. But GHC needs to track evidence. There needs to be some proof, in fact, that we can solve uh, this constraint. And that's one of these ev terms. In this case, we don't really want to construct a proof of this. Instead, what I'm going to do is make a universal coercion that can prove the equality between any two types. So in this case, I'm proving the equality between this LHS tie and this RHS tie. It's a nominal equality, as we saw before. And this prov, that's a provenance. Where did the equality come from? Well, it came from a plugin. And a plugin allows me to sort of specify where in the plugin. And so this is n plus 0 equals n. That string is totally uninterpreted. And the only time it ever gets used is if we're examining, say, why did something get proved? Why do we know something? Well, we can see this as a hint that it came from this code. So we can maybe grep our code for this. And we're going to build this evidence and return it as the ev term um, that we return in this list of solved constraints. The other challenge here is that I need to somehow know um, uh, what, the, what plus and what zero are. So I could just look, is it spelled plus, is it spelled zero? But of course, Haskell is this language, it has modules, right? There could be many pluses in scope, there could be many zeros in scope. I specifically want the one from the prelim module. Um, and so I need to load up the prelim module here, and then look up the plus uh, tycon and look up the, the zero uh, datacon in here. Um, one real challenge, and this was a challenge even for me, even with my experience in GHC, is how to actually do this. And so one of my uh, bits of learning as I'm producing this video is that this really needs to be cleaned up, right? This was quite hard to figure out. Um, so a lot of this stuff came from looking at, uh, am I in the right module here? No, I doubt I am. I don't want to be in this module. I want to be in the TC, oh, how do I even navigate this? Ah. Uh, let's go to content. There's going to be a lot of things here. I want tc.plugin. And this module exports a lot of the things that we need in order to uh, to write a plugin. So lookup org, for example, takes a module and an oc name and gets us a name. And so if we trace the types here, we can we can see that lookup is in fact e exactly what we want. And we see we see that it's used here. Um, and 
um, the 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 upshot of all of this is is that is that assembling all of these pieces is is quite hard, right? From the with the error that we saw at the beginning to um, uh, uh, to, to to even sort of finding all of these things, it's a bit of it's a bit of a rough challenge to to get one of these type checker plugins or other plugins together. And I, I think from GHC, we really owe it to our users to do to do a better job of this. Um, so I, I think that's that's enough for now. Um, I'll I'll leave you here. One thing I should say is that um, in the description is linked a page from uh, Matthew Pickering, who's put together a whole bunch of resources that um, that are, are helpful in writing these. The good news here is that actually using a type checker plugin is fairly straightforward. So if you want to build something that that requires your clients to use these type checker plugins, I think you'll have a good experience with that, or they'll have a good experience with that. Um, but uh, but I do think that we have have some room to grow here. Um, anyway. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.